All right, now let's talk about electric motors. This is our lesson three in electromagnetism. In the previous topics, we have learned a few fundamentals which lay a foundation for this topic. It is a very important topic. To understand this chapter nicely, I would recommend that if you have not gone through the previous lessons, please go through it. All right, so let's start. Electric motors. What is an electric motor? Have you ever seen, wonder if you have ever seen electric motor in your real life? Yes, you have. Because electric motors are present all around us in the various day-to-day -day devices that we use, right? If you look at this washing machine, the fridge, the refrigerators that we have in our homes, mixer grinders, they all work on electric motors. So where do you find the electric motors? What does the electric motor do? Let's understand. The electric motor, look at the name itself, motor. Right? Motor comes from the term motion. The motor term comes from the term motion. Is there some motion that happens inside the washing machine? Inside the mixer grinder? Inside the refrigerator? Think about it. Yes, there is motion happening here inside the washing machine. What is the thing that moves? There is a drum inside which moves, which rotates and that's how our clothes gets washed. Right? In the refrigerator, if you look inside, there is a fridge, there, there is a fan at the back which rotates, which turns and blows cold air in, in the compartments of your refrigerator and makes it cold. Similarly, in the mixer grinders, the two pictures that you see here, they are rotating. Let's say is motion happening. So what is the device which creates this motion? It is the electric motor. The electric motors, they work on electricity. If you look at the picture also, each of these devices, they need electricity to run. Right? If there is no electricity, these devices will not run. Fine. So what is the input energy here? The input energy that goes in is your electrical energy. And this electrical energy is converted into the energy of motion. Right. So let's read what we have here on the slide. Electric motor is a rotating device which converts, which converts electrical energy to mechanical energy. What is mechanical energy? This term mechanical also comes from the term motion, motion energy. So electrical motor is a rotating device. What kind of a device? It is a rotating device which converts the electrical energy to mechanical energy. So let's understand how electric motor works. That's how a basic motor looks like. Inside each of these devices, the motor might look slightly different, but always the one thing which is always present in all the electric motor is this part. Very, very important thing. This is called a shaft, or you can also call it an axle. A shaft or an axle. Now, this is the rotating part. This is the rotating part. It rotates. The shaft rotates. As it rotates, the things which are attached to the shaft, they also move, they also rotate. So what can you attach to the shaft? If you are attaching blades to the shaft, if you are attaching blades to the shaft, you have created a fan. You have created a fan. The, the blades of the fan are moving round and round, right? As in the case of this refrigerator. If you attach, if you attach a drum, say that you're attaching a drum. Difficult to understand, let me take you all to my whiteboard. Say that this is your washing machine and this is your motor. Where do you fix the motor? You fix the motor somewhere at the back of the washing machine, right? You attach a drum. You attach a drum somewhere here. 
So this is your drum. You fill this drum up with all the clothes that you see lying here and the drum rotates. The drum rotates, your clothes gets washed. How is the same motor attached in case of a mixer grinder? You turn it. And the blades are attached. Alright. So I hope you all can visualize. Because visualizing is very important to learn physics nicely. Right. If you still have any questions, please pose them in the comment box. I will try to answer each and every one of them. Okay. Alright. So let us now understand what we have on the inside of the electric motor. So what you see on the screen might look slightly complicated, but believe me, let's understand them step by step. Let us focus on the picture here, the picture on the left. So what do you see in the picture on the left? You see two magnets, red color, opposite ends of the magnets facing each other. In between the magnet, you have a rectangular piece of wire. So the current flows in this wire. This wire is connected in turn, if you see, it is connected to these rings. They are called split ring commutators. So what is the shape of the ring? They are like semicircles, two semicircles, split ring commutators. Do you see a contact between them? Are they touching each other? No, there is a gap in between, which is very, very important to understand. There is a gap in between, right? These split ring commutators, they are also made up of conducting material, right? Split ring commutators, they are connected to the battery. They are connected to the battery so that the current flows, right? There is a current flow and there is a contact point here and between the wire, if you see, this black line, they are your wire and the split ring commutators, there is a contact point, they are called your brushes they are metal brushes right so the split ring is moving it rotates right electric motor has to rotate what is the part that rotates this coil this rotates as a result the split ring commutators which are well attached with the wire they also rotate so as the rectangular coil rotates, the split ring commutators, they also rotate. But they are always in constant contact with the electricity here, with the battery here, with the help of these metal brushes. The metal brushes are not moving. If this is a metal brush, the split ring commutator is moving, but metal brush brushes are all the time touching the split ring commutator. So that's how a working inside part of a electric motor looks like. If you look at the second picture, you'll understand. Look at the split ring commutators. They're all the time moving. The orange thing which is moving, all the time moving. They are all the time in contact with the, with the brushes here. All right, so let's see. Let's understand why this rectangular coil rotates. Let's focus on these two pictures. Here we are talking about the working of the electric motor. Let's focus on the first picture. We'll understand picture by picture. So right now I would request you all to just focus on picture number one. So look at this motor. You all have understood you have two magnets. In between the magnets you have a rectangular coil which is attached to the split rings. The split rings are connected to the battery. This is your switch. The connection is complete. Alright. Now let us look step by step. Let us look at the at the side AB of the wire. Let us look at the side AB of the wire. So let us mark the current. How is the current flowing? The current comes from the positive terminal. It is very important that you mark the current. Flows all the way like this. Right? These black arrows also depict the current. So that's how 
the current is flowing in this complete circuit. This is your complete circuit. Now let us look at the side AB of this rectangular coil. All right, let's use the Fleming's left hand rule to find the direction of the force which will be acting on the length AB of the wire. Why will the force act on the length AB of the wire? Why? Because it is carrying current. Whenever there is a current carrying wire in a magnetic field, it experiences a force. So you see that there is a magnetic field present here because of the presence of the two magnets and there is electricity present here. So a force will be created. Use the Fleming's left hand rule to work out the direction on work out the direction of the force acting on the length AB of the wire and the length CD of the wire. Work it out. So when you use the Fleming's left hand rule, you'll see, you'll have to make your first finger point in the direction of the magnetic field, north to south. The second finger will point in the direction of the current. The current is going inside your screen. So second finger should enter the screen. You'll see that the thumb moves down. What is the direction of the force? We have found out the direction of the force, which is like this. The force which is experienced by the length AB is downward. What is the direction of the force acting on the length CD of the wire? Work it out yourself. Use the Fleming's left hand rule. How do you use the Fleming's left hand rule? The field has to point north to south. The first finger points north to south. The current is coming out from your screen. The current is coming out of your screen the thumb goes up and please be careful you have to use the left hand right so what is the direction of the force on the length CD of the wire it is in the upward direction right let us vanish the hands to get more clarity here so if you see the side AB of the rectangular section of the wire face experiences a force downwards the side CD experiences a force upwards. So as a result, this whole coil, A, B, C, D, you have to visualize the coil that we are talking about, A, B, C, D, it experiences a turning force. It experiences a turning effect. The coil turns anti-clockwise. The axle as a result, which is attached in between the split ring, it also turns. Do you see the motion happening? Do you see the motor, motor working? Right? Right? I hope it makes sense. So what happens after half a cycle? After half a cycle, the, the side CD, which is on your right, it moves towards the left now let us come to the picture number two if you compare picture number one and picture number two picture number two is the picture of what is the status of this rectangular coil after half a cycle if we compare the side cd here the cd has moved and come towards the north pole the side cd which was earlier near the south pole has now come near the North Pole. The side AB, which was earlier near the North Pole, it has come near the South Pole. Now let us use the Fleming's left hand rule to work out the direction of the forces on the length, length CD and AB of the wire again. Please do remember how is the current flowing. It is very important to understand the current is coming from your, the current is coming from your positive terminal This is how the current is flowing. Right? So let us find the direction of the force on the sides, side CD. Use the Fleming's left hand rule. You'll see that the side CD experiences a force downwards. What is the direction of the force experienced by the side AB? 
use the Fleming's hand, left hand rule again, you will see that it is experiencing a pause upward. Let us vanish the hands from the screen. So if you see again, an anti-clockwise movement is created. The axle keeps turning, keeps turning anti-clockwise. So the motor, the motor keeps turning anti-clockwise. So this is your motor. If this is the motor of a fan, where do the fan, fans blade fix? You fix the blades of the fan somewhere here on the axle. Axle, which is also called the shaft. So when the rectangular coil turns, when the electricity is put on, when there is current in the circuit, when you have put on the fan, electricity flows through the coil of the motor. As a result, the coil starts rotating as a result of which the axle starts rotating and the fan's blade start rotating. Right? So I hope you all understood how the motor, electric motor works. So what will happen if we reverse the direction of the current? So what will happen if you reverse the direction of the current? Say that you are reversing this battery now you have positive terminal on this side, negative on this side, so the battery is now like this. Right, so how is the current flowing? Mark the direction of the current on the coil as well. Use the Fleming's left hand rule again and work out the direction of the movement of the rectangular coil. So now you'll see that the end AB experiences a force upward. The end CD is experiencing a force downward. The force is depicted by the thumb. So if you look at the thumb going up, look at the thumb going down. So what kind of a motion it creates? It creates a clockwise motion now. So if you are reversing the direction of the current, what is happening? The motor turns in the opposite direction. So we have proved here that when you reverse the direction of the current in the electric motor, the electric motor turns in the opposite direction. What will happen if you reverse the polarity of the magnet? Now this is something I would like you all to work it out yourself. Reverse the polarity. I'm making the north as the south south as the north pole. How is the current flowing? Let's mark the current. Right? Use the Fleming's left hand rule and figure it out yourself what happens to the direction of the motion of the what happens to the direction of the motion of the turning of the if you want, you can pause the video, work it out yourself and come back again. You'll find that the motor now turns clockwise. So if you are reversing the current or if you are reversing the polarity, the turning off of the motor gets reversed. How can you increase the turning effect of the motor? So let us understand this title. Increase the turning effect means how can you increase the speed of the of the rotation? Right there are various ways in which you can increase the speed of the rotation You can increase the current more current flows in the motor the faster it works You can increase the number of turns in the coil the more is the number of turns Stronger is your motor the faster it will turn you can use a soft core inside the coil so you can you can take a soft core soft core could be a soft iron core and wrap the wire coil around it to make the rectangular coil you can also use electromagnets or strong magnets the advantage of using electromagnet is that you can control what could be the strength of that particular electromagnet if there is more current flowing in the electromagnet, you create a stronger magnet. If there is a weak current flowing in the electromagnet, you create a weaker magnet. 
if there is no current flowing in the electromagnet that means the electromagnet is not a magnet we have turned off the electric motor right so here there is a worked example please pause the video for a moment work it out and then play to tell your answers all right so let's solve this question on the right there is an end view of the coil in a simple electric motor so this is your electric motor you have two magnets in between you have a coil so at this end which is with a cross the current is entering into the paper and this end with a dot the current is coming out of the paper so how does the coil looks like looks, looks something like this the current is entering so three ways in which you can increase the turning effect of the coil you can increase the current in the coil you can use stronger magnet you can increase the number of turns in the magnet now question number two, use Fleming's left hand rule to work out which way the coil turns. Let's use the Fleming's left hand rule on both the sides of the wire one by one. If you look at the side where the current is entering into the paper, use the Fleming's left hand rule, you'll see that the force acting on this end is downwards. Use the Fleming's left hand rule on the other end, you'll see that the force acting on it is so in which direction is this coil or the motor rotating? It is rotating in a clockwise, sorry, anti-clockwise direction. So this chapter was all about motors. In the next topic, we'll be talking about electromagnetic induction.